My vote. My vote. My vote. My vote. My vote. My vote. Your vote. Your vote. Your vote. Your vote. Your vote. Your vote. Our vote. Our vote. Our vote. Over 100 years ago, the struggle began. With a new Commonwealth constitution in place, the Commonwealth Franchise Act banned any Aboriginal native of Australia, Asia, Africa, or the islands of the Pacific, except New Zealand, from voting if they were not already on the roll. It was up to an electoral official to decide who was an Aboriginal native. Back then, for our mob, turning 21 meant you were old enough to fight for country, but denied a voice in how the country was run. Over 60 years of staunch campaigning followed. The road was long, but the struggle was won. It began in 1936, when Aboriginal activist William Cooper set up the Australian Aborigines League. Times were changing, people were talking. Change was imminent, but it took another 13 years. In 1962, the right to vote was extended from those serving in the Defence Force and those already on the state rolls to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people over the age of 18, regardless of gender. Against the odds, in 1971, we saw Neville Bonner appointed to the Senate, the first Aboriginal Australian in any Australian Parliament. Three years later, he was formally elected by the people to retain his seat. That same year, in 1974, Aboriginal candidates were elected in Queensland and the Northern Territory. And two years later, Sir Doug Nicholls was appointed the Governor of South Australia. Compulsory enrolment and effectively compulsory voting was passed in 1984. Um, I first voted as soon as I turned 18. I was actually really excited to vote. Sometime after 19 70. I first voted when I was 18 years old. I was a late bloomer in voting. I voted when I was 18. March 1983. I get a lot of inspiration from um, people like my great grandfather, Sir Doug Nichols, uh, William Cooper, um, all those sort of people that fought hard, you know, for that basic civil right to just go and have a say, you know? So, you know, old people like Uncle Sir Doug Nichols, my Uncle William Cooper, Uncle Bill Onus, Aunty Marge Tucker. People like Charles Perkins definitely uh, inspired my vote, given the fact that he fought so hard for Indigenous uh, rights in, in our community and yeah, took to the streets, done the freedom rides, those type of things. All the black fellas that have fought for us to get the vote have inspired me to vote. That's why I take an interest now and because I know how hard people have fought to get that vote. I remember seeing uh, Bonner, Neville Bonner and Charlie Perkins. They're, they're being counted. They're standing up as Aboriginals and being counted in this country. And so they, they were an inspiration. You cannot sit back and do nothing. You must do that if you want to honour our elders. that we have in this country, our freedom, all comes from our vote. You've got to play the game. If you want to, if you want to get something out of, out, of the, out of the government, you know, you've got to have a voice. And so you've got to vote. That's the only way you're going to do it. Everyone needs a right to their own opinion and our elders have fought a long time to get our opinion out so it's important that we appreciate that. Voting provides you with a voice to um, empower somebody else to govern what you value. People will be running the world and we will sit back and say, you know, who cares, they don't represent us. And it's like, guess what? If you don't vote, that's why they're not representing you because you have to vote if you want the representation. The more Aboriginals vote, the louder our voices are together. 
I think that our community have a really unique voice within Australian society, within Victorian, um, the Victorian community. I think it's incredibly important that we use our voice as loud and as proudly as we can and voting is one way that we can do that. I want an Australia that will celebrate diversity and look after the common man and look after the common woman. Women had to struggle to get the vote and then Aboriginal women had to struggle to get the vote and now I feel like it's a privilege to have it. I'm going to vote and I'm going to let my voice be heard and I'm going to vote for who I think should be in Parliament. If our community vote, we have a strong, strong voice. It'll be a stronger community. I think we can make the Koori vote stronger by getting our young ones to enrol. You know, across the world it's always young people that are sometimes a little bit slow to enrol and young people's voices are so important in, in making change within our society and so I just hope that all young Koori's enrol to vote this year. We want the best leader for our country and our actually culture as well. It's one thing to say we argue with the government but it's another thing to participate in who actually forms that government. It's about a, a sense of community in a way because you get to express your opinions and be allowed to have your view and vote. And the only people that will vote Aboriginal people into these positions of the utmost responsibility is ourselves, black fellas. We need black people to vote. We need someone to look up to and someone to vote for and hear our opinions of what we don't like around the community. If you're not going to speak up, you're not going to be heard. If you keep your mouth closed, you're not going to get fed. You know, you've got to, you've got to speak out and you, if you want change. Do it. Take the plunge. Become involved. Empower yourself, ask questions and then go and take the step forward and, and vote. It's really important that we have a voice and for Australia to recognise our voice as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And the best way to do it is to show it by voting. I would like dearly an opportunity to be speaking to somebody, you know, that's got Aboriginal blood sitting in that particular office, looking after Aboriginal affairs here in Victoria. Needs to be an Aboriginal person. I think seeing our own people with our own faces in Parliament, I think, would be fantastic as well. I think we need a number of Corries in politics so that we can make choices, we can make our voices, you know, our multiple voices heard. Well, I'm going to be voting soon, so I'll be looking for Indigenous people to vote for because I can relate to them and they're it's more inspiring to me. Anyone who's thinking about standing, make sure that you do. It's your right. We, all, we need you to stand up. We need, as Aboriginal people, we need a collective voice uh, and we need you to add to that collective voice and make us a stronger voice as a whole. Um, we need the right people representing us. Step up and, you know, be a role model for the rest of us kids because, like they say, the future is in your hands. I think it's the responsibility of every young person to think seriously about taking on the role of, of say, a um, uh, minister, a councillor in government and that. If you can participate in reshaping the type of world we live in, that's an enormous contribution to all humanity and I would encourage people to seriously consider it. Progress has been slow. Victorians still haven't had an elected Indigenous Member of Parliament. What are we waiting for? Are we going to let our ancestors' struggle be a wasted effort? Are we going to dishonour their effort? This is the time and this is the place. My vote. My vote. Your vote. Your vote. Our vote. Our